after is more than two. Usually we do too. Sometimes <laughs> it goes beyond that. Okay, so it's 17 minutes to eight. It's time for us to begin the conversation on Unibank. Unibank has taken the Bank of Ghana to court, among other things. They are asking the court to tell the Bank of Ghana to reverse the decision they made. What decision did the Bank of Ghana make? The Bank of Ghana revoked the license of Unibank and along with four other banks transferred their assets and some of their liabilities to a new entity called Consolidated Bank. This happened at the end of July. 30th July is when the announcement was made. 1st August is when Consolidated Bank was officially formed. And today is the 22nd of August, the past 22 days we have been following this issue very keenly. Like I said earlier, we will be bringing you snippets of our conversation with Professor Newman Kojokusi. Professor Newman Kojokusi was a board member of now defunct Unibank, a non-executive board member. And he came yesterday to canvas the position of Unibank shareholders. Particularly, he has always been spokesperson for Dr. This morning, what we'll begin with, and Malik and Enima are here to help us, uh, we'll begin with going through exactly what the writ says, the writ of someone says, when it comes to Unibank, Dragon Bank of Ghana, to court, and then we'll hear Professor Newman Kojokusi, and then we'll do some analysis of the issue. So guys, over to you, Malik. Okay, so Daniel, this is, um, and when you said uh, 17 uh, minutes to the top of the hour, Eight, I'm like, okay, so this is um, this case has 17 pages, both the writ, <laughs> um, the statement of claim, yes, everything. and everything. 17 pages. So, this 17 pages in these 17 pages is 68 paragraph statement of claim backing request for eight reliefs on behalf of the, uh, the plaintiffs, and the plaintiffs here are two. Dr. Kovina Dufour and Integrated Properties Limited. They are the, the, the plaintiffs. And, of course, the, the defendant here is the Bank of Ghana. Um, anyone may pick, take us through some of the, uh, the key issues in the statement of claim. The statement of claim is essentially the argument on the basis of which they are founding their request for these reliefs to be granted. And the reliefs are essentially eight of them. You mentioned just a few. Uh, we will go through all of the reliefs. Mm -hmm. But the statement of claim explains why they think that they have a solid case on the basis of which they are entitled to the reliefs that they are seeking. Anymore. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to start from the fifth paragraph. Um, the first four are really just establishing, in my opinion, the credibility of the plaintiff and then also and stating, yes, and who they are and stating who their defendant is. So as of the end of July 2017, Unibank was a leading indigenous capital bank with the highest paid up capital of 37 sorry, 370 million Ghana CDs and a capital adequacy ratio of 10.7% as acknowledged by the defendants, that's the Bank of Ghana. Unibank also had a total paid up capital, including income surplus of 422 million. They had 400,000 accounts, 54 branches and employed about 2,000 people, inclusive of outsourced staff. The defendant recognized in its review, that's the Bank of Ghana, recognized in its review that Unibank was one of the three banks which would be able to meet the new minimum capital requirements set by the defendants for banks in Ghana of a paid up capital of 400 million Ghana cities by December 2018. One of three banks that could meet that at that point. So based on um, August 2017 examination plan of the Banking Supervision Department, officials visited the premises of Unibank for an audit of the book. So that was the first audit. After this audit, the officials claimed to the management of Unibank that the bank's capital adequacy ratio, which is the ratio of a bank's capital to its risk, had gone down from 10.7% to 8.24%. Then, in September 2017, the defendants purported to reduce again the capital adequacy ratio from 8.24% to 4.8% as at that September 2017. 
from 2017 in August through to the end of the year, further visits were made by officials of the defendants to Unibank outside of this initial 2017 audit. After each visit, management of Unibank was informed of further downgrading of their financial position so that by November 2017, the CAR of the Unibank had gone negative. So from August 2017 to November 2017, right. they had gone from 10.7% and they were in the negative. And, and when you say CAR, you, you are talking about the capital, capital adequacy, adequacy ratio. ratio. Yes. Um, so paragraph 14. They they are arguing that the purported downgrading of the financial position of Unibank by the by the Bank of Ghana, in significant part, is due to the defendants unreasonably and unjustifiably impairing, even Bank of Ghana's or quasi government exposures to Unibank, and this is essentially saying, what the Bank of Ghana did when any time it visited the bank was. To look at the loan portfolio okay. and the the indebtedness of other institutions to the bank, and to assess them and their credibility and integrity, and after the assessment, it will downgrade them. Paragraph fourteen, they are saying that the Bank of Ghana actually downgraded even government of Ghana indebtedness to Unibank, and they said that what they did was essentially to say that the government of Ghana is not credit worthy. That it is unable to pay its debts to Unibank, and therefore it downgraded um, all of these. these and debts. the word deliberate was used there. That's a specific yes. allegation. That yes, this capital adequacy ratio was reduced because they deliberately downgraded these loans. Yes. So that they would be in a position that is unfortunate. In fact, if you check paragraph 15, they said the purported audits and downgrading of credit facilities on the books of Unibank by Bank of Ghana were carried out unlawfully and in bad faith. Okay. And in with a view to putting Unibank out of business. Do they point out the laws that were breached? Yes, they pointed out the laws that, Which is? that were breached. Um, essentially, Act, Act 930, um, they, 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 they pointed out. But as we go through, you will see... Yeah, let's, let, let's, go to, let's go so to that the point. The deliberate mm. point you are talking about is paragraph 22. They said the Bank of Ghana stated in a press release that Unibank had been identified after an asset quality review in 2016 as significantly undercapitalized undercapital, with a capital adequacy ratio of 4.75, but deliberately failed to disclose to the public that shareholders of Unibank had injected additional capital, which then took the capital adequacy ratio to 10.7 as at July 27. Okay, so they are referring to the assets quality review that really started this whole thing. I remember that in that 20th March statement, the Bank of Ghana stated that Unibank was one of the nine banks who were identified in that assets quality review of 2015 mm -hmm. to be in, to have been in a bad state. And they named that capital adequacy ratio. Remind me of it's 4.75. Yes, yes 4.75. Now, according to the Bank of Ghana law, if the capital adequacy ratio of a bank goes below 5%, the bank is in trouble. Yeah. So because they were at 4.755%, they had issues. So, which is However, uh -huh. in the Bank of Ghana statement of 20th March, the Bank of Ghana stated that as of August 2017, the capital adequacy ratio had gone up it, to 7.7%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I right. Now, this writ says that they refused to acknowledge the that there was an in injection of there was capital. an injection of capital mm -hmm. by the by the shareholders. by the shareholders which raised the capital adequacy ratio to, to 10.7 10 as of July 2017. As of July last year. As of July last year, it was 10.75. Yes, that's what they are saying. Okay. You know what? Let's hear the Bank of Ghana governor when he was sort of giving this, what the state of Unibank was <laughs> way back in March. Yeah, and March we would continue year. with, uh, we would just continue with uh, looking at the case as it's being presented. We identified during the AQR update exercise in 2016 to be significantly undercapitalized. The two banks subsequently submitted capital restoration plans to the Bank of Ghana. These plans, however, yielded no success in returning the banks to solvency and compliance with prudential requirements. The official administrator appointed for Unibank in March 2018 has found that the bank is beyond 
rehabilitation. Shareholders, related and connected parties, had taken amounts totaling 3.7 billion CDs, which were neither granted through the normal credit delivery process nor reported as part of the bank's loan portfolio. In addition, amounts totaling 1.6 billion had been granted to shareholders, related and connected parties in the form of loans and advances without due process and in breach of relevant provisions of Act 930. Altogether, shareholders, related and connected parties of Unibank had taken out an amount of 5.3 billion CDs, constituting 75% of total assets of the bank. So that was Governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ernest Addison. He was there. This was when Consolidated Bank was being formed. And basically, he was giving a summary of what KPMG had found when KPMG went into the Unibank, went, took over as administrator and went into Unibank's financials. So we would go ahead with looking at exactly what Unibank is asking the Bank of Ghana to do. And in so far, and, and Malik, so far we have looked at the arguments that Unibank makes about the states that the bank was in and how come they were in the states that they were in as of um, 30th July when the Bank of Ghana made that particular statement, when the Bank of Ghana governor made that particular statement. Basically, um, in, a way, as, in a way of summarizing, they have said that, look, our bank was doing well. Uh, Capital adequacy ratio was 10.75% as of July 2017. We are sitting down. Three surprise on-site examinations are made. Our loans are downgraded. And when those loans were downgraded, each downgrade of the loans took our capital adequacy ratio lower. Now, um, what the bankers will explain to you is that capital adequacy ratio is when everyone comes for their money. Like every depositor comes for their money, the, mon the amount that is left. Yeah. yeah, the amount of money that is left. And the, the, at the moment, when, when the Bank of Ghana was making this statement in August, or in, at the end of July, early August, that capital adequacy ratio was negative 74%. That means that if everyone comes for their money, they'll be in debt of up to 74%. They, they can't cover 74% of the money that people um, have given them. Um, if I may. So um, we we'll, would we'll go ahead and ask and go straight to what Unibank is asking the Bank of Ghana to do, um, specifically as regards their... Or have we gotten there anymore? No, we haven't. Um, but we can, we can go there. I mean, basically, like you said from the beginning, they are asking that they're asking for their license back. So they're asking that um, Unibank be removed from the consolidated bank and handed um, back to the shareholders and the management. So that's that's the end goal, really. Yes, of, yes. Of that's basically what they're asking them. What yes. we'll do is that we'll take these important messages. When we come back, um, we'll finish up with the Unibank statements. We'll hear from the Bank of Ghana again. And then we'll go to Prof Newman Kusi's um, uh, interview that we had with him yesterday. Stay with us. This is the Super Morning Show. I wake up in the morning, it's a new day. And I got bills that I have to pay. Now you're running late, running out of time. Feels like the world is waiting in line. Oh, yeah, what's the way you are say? Uber phone phone. Now I dial a star 737 hash. And in your way, you are. And 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 you I don't need data or internet. I have something that's faster than a jet. Just like mm -hmm. never dead the gravity. You could have be a bum mind saba, a teacher, a rapper, a schoolboy, a school girl, or a trader, a bank can be a chairman or a baker. Sam guarantee you trust bank. Wouldn't you rather bank with us? Don't come yo, don't come in. Hey yeah, ten pesos, ten ten qua, ten pesos. 
Vodafone is 10 years old and is giving you an anniversary gift of 10 times bonus and 10 pesos call rate across networks. Browse for 10 pesos per megabyte. Call Vodafone or any other network at the same rate of 10 pesos per minute. That's not all. Oh. Share your scratch card with two more people, the Kikimi style, and the three of you will each enjoy 10 times the value of your card. Dial star 135 hash to subscribe. Terms and conditions apply. The future is exciting. Ready? Nationwide Medical Insurance, the leader in private health insurance, has deployed superior technology to make your healthcare experience more convenient and exciting. With the Nationwide mobile app, you can order your prescription drugs and we will deliver to your doorsteps. With over 600 dependable healthcare service providers, you're just a step away locating your service provider of choice and accessing hospital claim information in real time. Our corporate clients are guaranteed timely corporate utilization reports. We provide on-site clinics to give employees access to health care in the comfort of their offices. Enjoy these amazing benefits and so much more by signing on to Nationwide Medical Insurance today. Call us on toll-free number 0800-222222 or visit our website www.nationwidemh.com. Nationwide Medical Insurance. Join the healthcare family. Move on up, 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 Moving on up is paying from your phone and getting looks of approval from your friends. Moving on up is doing all your banking from your bathroom like a boss. Moving on up is losing your wallet, but your money is still safe. Moving on up is attaching any bank's card to the Echo Bank mobile app. Oh yeah, download the Echo Bank mobile app. Make we go and bank like a boss. Move on up with Echo Bank, the Pan African Bank. Oh, hello, Ama. Long time, oh. Ooh. I've been standing here knocking, sir. Where were you? Oh, I'm very sorry. I actually saw you in my cameras when you were walking in. But I was on a long-distance video call with a big cousin in the UK. How are you able to do that? Haven't you heard of the broadband service from Telesol? They offer fast speed with vast internet bundles to choose from and very affordable monthly rates. Wow, is that so? Yes, so. They offer both 4G and fiber broadband. Uh-huh. Go on, tell me more. And Telesol is free. Fully Ghanaian. I'm rushing right away to contact them. Any more details? Yes, you can contact Telesol today for further details on 0303-975-342 or 344 or toll free on 0800-900,000 or visit www.telesol4g.com. Telesol 4G, just a touch. It's a new day. I want you to first think big, not small. Think of how great we can be when we work together. Together, we can ensure that our hard work will provide a better future. Together, we can provide a foundation for you and your business to succeed, regardless of its size. Together, we can create opportunities for all. Bank with us today and let's journey forward together. Forward together. Cow Bank, forward together. Blow the candles, sound the trumpet, and scream! Media is 50! Media, your number one air conditioner and appliance manufacturer, is 50 years old. 50 years of top-notch quality, and we're celebrating it big. Starting from 15% discounts on appliances from any media showroom or authorized reseller. Join the celebration of Media at 50. We have amazing home appliances at great discounts. Tabletop fridges starting at 499 Ghana CDs. Four banana gas cookers starting at 799 Ghana CDs. Chest freezers are also starting at 799 Ghana CDs. Blow the candles, sound the trumpet, and scream! And so many appliances for you to choose from. One so much, oh dear. Remember, it's a celebration. It's media at 50 big sales on appliances. Visit a media showroom or authorized reseller now. Or call us on 0503 400 600. It's the media at 50 promotion. Terms and conditions apply. The other day, as I was in my kitchen preparing my special jollof made with Lily right for my family, I heard the knock at the door. It was my mechanic. Instead of calling me to pick my car, he bought it himself. I said, Cho, he said, Fo. I said, Take the car back. I will come and pick it myself. I said, Turn off the fire from under the Lily jollof. There was another knock at the door. It was my neighbor. I said, Neighbor, neighbor. He said, Fo. My dog has jammed your wall again, oh. I said, don't be silly. You don't have a dog. My wife and kids came home and we saw that he enjoyed. 
So, it was my pastor. He said, bless you. I said, bless you too. He said, did he come to church on Saturday? I said, acho, but uh, why are you coming to tell me this on Wednesday? Having to fend off visitors at mealtimes because of Lele's tasty aromatic rice? Celebrate every mealtime by sharing with friends and family near or far. Lele, tasty food, happy family. Acho, this advertisement has been vetted and approved by the Food and Drugs Authority. Tell what be your thing. Stand big, Anna. Dry it, yeah, baby. Yeah, say I see. My body was your thing. Know your thing. You fall, do your thing. My body was your thing. Know your thing. You fall, do your thing. My body was your thing. Know your thing. You fall, do your thing. Stand big, bango. Help you to do your thing. To do your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you do that over. Joy 99.7 FM It's six minutes past eight on the Super Morning Show on Joy 99.7 FM. So far, we started looking at giving you the information. Now, we are looking at exactly what the what Unibank is. We are looking at what Unibank is stating as the reasons for the relief that it is seeking. The relief it is seeking is simple. They want a reversal of the Bank of Ghana's decision to revoke their license, their license, and to add their assets to Consolidated Bank. I'm going back to Malik Abbas Dabo and Elimwa Enimado um, as they bring us the summary of what the statement of claims says. So, guys, let's let's get straight to it. What's the basis that Unibank gave for the relief they're seeking? And, and, and Daniel, yeah, we say that Unibank is seeking. But in reality, it's just a director of Unibank who is acting on behalf of the rest of the directors um, of Unibank. So this is Dr. Kopnadu for, and then um, one other plaintiff, they are seeking all of these reliefs on behalf of directors of Unibank. And we went through um, some of their argument dating back to when the Bank of Ghana started um, auditing and downgrading the, 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 their loan portfolios and which downgrade then affected their capital adequacy ratio, and which started from 10.7 down to 8.24, down to 4.24, down to negative, um, in the negative 20s. And you, the, the plaintiffs arguing that all of these downgrades were done in bad faith and were designed to make um, Unibank a less profitable business. Now, if you go to paragraph 25, 
they say that the obligations of the bank of the obli obli obligations of government i the indebtedness of government which was in the region of uh, let me look for this figure 868 million 973 uh, thousand Ghana cities this was obligations of government that is government owing or government institutions owing Unibank this amount of money. If all of this amount of money had been paid, the bank would have been in a better position than it was when it was given to the official administrator. And they say that the deliberate downgrading of these obligations and the creation of the impression that government was incapable of paying was itself a part of the determination to make uh, Unibank look unprofitable as a business. Um, if you look at 26, they say the plaintiffs further state that neither the defendant, that's the Bank of Ghana or the official administrator, could lawfully disregard these obligations. That's the obligations that government owed them. That they could not lawfully disregard them That because this was money the bank was owed. And this was money, if the money was paid, the bank would be in a better uh, position. Anyway, you want to read something from the... Um, um, yes. So in March 2018, there was a press release appoint that appointed the official administrator. Mm -hmm. The defendants made a reference to the Ministry of Finance, um, having recently agreed to absorb 428 million 817 cities out of the possible 868 yes. million. But this figure is not reflected in the figure for liquidity support contained in the statement of the governor of the defendant to the press mm -hmm. on 20th March. No did they reflect in the accounts of Unibank prepared by the official administrator? Absolutely. And they are saying that another letter which was dated 14 February um, and which was from the acting head of the Banking Supervision Department of the uh, Bank of Ghana. And this was directed at the man managing director of Unibank. And this letter stated that the Ministry of Finance, and I'm quoting what the letter said, the Ministry of Finance on Wednesday, 7 February 2018, agreed to use their outstanding indebtedness to you in respect of the interim payment certificate amounting to 428 million, the amount Enima just mentioned, to offset part of the unsecured portion of your obligation to the Bank of Ghana. There had been an adjustment of Unibank's November 2017 um, prudential returns with the above payment. Yet this amount is not reflected. And this is one of the cases they are making. They said even though this letter from the, the, the acting head of the banking supervision department said that this 428 million was going to be used uh, to up, offset part of their debt, they said it was not reflected in the statement of the bank of the governor of the Bank of Ghana when he referred to it uh, during the announcement of the takeover by the official administrator. Yes, and then in March, um, on March second, they also said that there was an additional nine hundred and fifty-five million five hundred and eighty-six thousand four hundred and 21 as well which was attributable to the government and was backed by supporting government by supporting documents sorry and as of um 20th march nothing had been said about it as well so there's an additional 955 million on top of the 800 they are contending that when the governor of the bank of ghana when the statement was released announcing the takeover by the official administrator that's kpmg it was stated in that release that the capital adequacy ratio was stood at negative 24.02 and a capital deficit of 1.18 billion as of December 2017. They say that this was erroneously based on a disregard of the admitted debt of 428 million that the finance ministry admitted that the government of Ghana owed this 428 million. Now, the case they are making is that this amount was disregarded when the capital adequacy ratio was calculated and that the, the central bank only arrived at a capital adequacy ratio of 24.02 uh, and a, a deficit of 1.18 million, 18 billion dollars, Ghana cities, because they disregarded this 428 million. If this 420 million had been factored in, the capital adequacy ratio would not have been 24% as claimed, which was also the basis why they said that the, gap, the bank was in a state where they needed to appoint an official administrator. And then the next issue after that is that they say that the governor of the, the sorry, is that the Bank of Ghana falsely um, claimed that they were 
continuing to increase its assets base. So they were granting new loans to clients between September 2017 and December 2017. Unibank is saying that that is not true. There were system challenges arising from software migration. So those loans were not um, obvious or they were not seen at that time because they were having IT challenges. However, they were not, um, they were not granting new loans to clients. Yeah, so they said that there was a meeting, and this meeting was this meeting came about because Dr. Dufour asked for it, and this meeting was on the 30th July 2018, and this happened at the premises of the Bank of Ghana, where Dr. Dufour expressed concern about the unreasonable, and I'm quoting, the unreasonable and unlawful downgrading of assets of Unibank by the official administrator. This is the KPMG, especially as regards to obligations of government and quasi-government institutions. Dr. Dufour, in that meeting, said that the shareholders were ready to inject further capital into Unibank, and as previously uh, indicated, they had written to the Bank of Ghana and the official administrator saying that the shareholders were willing to inject some money. And then on the first, on the 30th of July, when he asked for this meeting, at that meeting, he reiterated their determination to do this. And this is in paragraph 34. They were determined to inject more capital into Unibank at the time, having regard to all of the issues that the official administrator raised in this meeting. If you look at paragraph 30, uh, 35, they say that by a letter dated 31st to the official administrator and copied to the governor of the Bank of Ghana, who had chaired the meeting, referred to, remember I said that Dr. Dufour asked for a meeting, which happened on the 30th. Now, on the 31st, there was... Uh, a letter which was copied to the governor of the Bank of Ghana because he chaired this meeting. And that letter stated clearly that Dr. Dufour, on behalf of the shareholders of Unibank, drew attention to the lack of justification for the apparent impairment of the, by the official administrator of, among others, government and quasi. So if you go through this, there was emphasis on the downgrading of especially the amount of money owed by government. They say if this downgrading had not happened, the state in which the bank was would not have happened. And they said there was simply no justification. If you read from large parts of the paragraphs are talking about the downgrade of this government indebtedness, that it is that which negatively impacted the state of the bank. But it's not just the government indebtedness. It was the loan portfolio. They went to look at a number of loans there and downgraded them. But they include government indebtedness, which is what they are highlighted throughout Absolutely. the end of the, the engagement. Point that you can't say that the government is incapable of paying. To downgrade a loan is to say that the person who has taken the loan cannot pay. But the government of Ghana, you can't say that the government of Ghana cannot pay its debt to Unibank. Therefore, there was no justification. And that's what they are stating, restating in paragraph 35, that it was unjustified. And Dr. Dufour made this known at the meeting, and then subsequently he followed up with a letter which he stated that there was no justification for that downgrade. Yes, and then um, it further goes on to say that the shareholders of Unibank have on previous occasions provided additional ca um, capital to ensure compliance by Unibank, but in this particular instance they were not given the opportunity to provide any additional capital needed to show up the alleged deficiency, and no lawful basis exists for the denial Denial to the shareholders of this opportunity as anticipated in March 2018. So they're actually saying that if they had been given the, the chance, they would have been able to raise enough money to save the bank. And they say the governor of the Bank of Ghana, is like the Bank of Ghana itself is aware that in previous yes. times, previous like when they injected to raise the CAR from 4.75%. 4. Mm -hmm. um, 5 5 10 10 point. Yes. 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 yes, yes. So they say the government, Bank, Bank, Bank of Ghana is, is aware, aware that they could have that done that. Previously, they have done this before. Mm -hmm. They are capable of do, doing that. And yet, they were not offered this opportunity that you, you, you speak about. Now, they said, in response to a request by the shareholders on the 3rd August, this is uh, just... Um, this month for a report. Thirteenth. Thirteenth. Hey. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> this one is thirteenth of third. Of third. Anyway. So, <laughs> how do you read it? I, I can't read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there is thirteenth and there is RG. So you don't know whether it's third or it's thirteenth. But they are saying that they made a request, and the request was responded to, 
and it was said that they were unable to make available a copy of the official administrator's report on the bank to the shareholders. And during the news, you heard uh, Joy Business report mm -hmm. that sources at the Bank of Ghana say at the time that the official administrator took over the bank, there was no board for the bank. So they could not lawfully submit a report to anybody that they can say this is uh, the bank because at that time the bank was under official uh, was under management by the official administrator so they couldn't lawfully give them a copy of the report that they request for which they have stated here in paragraph 42 yes and then we come to the kpmg reports the plaintiffs state that this is unacceptable because they claim that they have not received that report even though it is being widely disseminated to discredit unibank and um, so they're saying that it should be made available to them but also the caveat in the kpmg report which says that it should not be made available or com communicated to any party without the prior written consent of the official administrator and there's administrator administrator also says in that that um, reports that we have not sought to verify information contained therein. So if you remember um, when Prof was speaking yesterday, he did say um, that that was a caveat. He, his section, that's the IFS, they had been, they had, KPMG had called him, they had tried to get some verification. He had done what he could, what he couldn't do, what he didn't do. And so that's, that issue is also here about the fact that they have not seen the report. And even those who wrote the report, said that this report should not be communicated because they have not verified all the information that's contained And then in they the raised a further issue that when the Bank of Ghana issued its press release announcing the appointment of the official administrator, it said that Unibank, quote, will remain open for business under the management and control of KPMG overseen by the Bank of Ghana and is not being closed and liquidated. And this was the assurance that was given in that press release. And they are saying that the press release actually said that all depositors will have their money and the, their money will remain safe and they can continue to do business at any of the branches of Unibank. That no depositors of the bank will lose any money. This was what the press release says. They said that contrary to this, many customers have been unable to access their funds at Unibank since the appointment of the official administrator. And then right after that, on the 1st of August, the defendant issues another press statement um, um, saying that government has established new the new bank, which is the um, Consolidated Bank of Ghana. And so that's Unibank and four other banks. It also states that it has appointed, okay, Mr. Nino Du, a man of KPMG as receiver. And and we know the story of, of that, the Consolidated Bank. They banks. say that the, the, the actions of the Bank of Ghana announced on 1st August, that's the consolidation mm -hmm. of the banks, and a purported transfer of the good, good assets, assets and, and liabilities. liabilities of Unibank cannot be justified in terms of Section 123 of Act 930. Yes, which makes it clear that upon the appointment of a receiver in the circumstances provided for in Section 123 of Act 930, the receiver shall be the sole legal representative of the bank whose license has been revoked and shall succeed the rights and the powers of the shareholders, the directors and key management personnel of the bank. They say the consolidation of the, the good assets of the Unibank, eh, in, in, in their view, is expropriation of the property of... The plaintiff, in this case, Dr. Dufour and the other shareholders of Unibank, in contravention of Article 1, Article 18 and 20 of the 1992 Constitution, that there was no justification at all to take the assets and just put them together and say you have created a new entity. That in their view, amounts to expropriation. Yes, yeah, so in, in summary, what they're, they're saying is that um, the defendants, in collusion with the Minister of Finance, have taken taxpayer resources, made that available to Consolidated Bank, and what they're seeking to do is to nationalize a private property of the shareholders of Unibank, contrary to the provisions of the 1992 Constitution of Ghana. So this is what the plaintiffs in summary are asking for. They're asking for an order of injunction restraining the defendants from expropriating Unibank. They want um, the license purportedly granted to the Consolidated Bank Ghana Limited. They want that um, withdrawn because it was not granted in accordance with the Act. They want a declaration that the good, uh, the good assets and liabilities of Unibank, including deposits of depositors, cannot be lawfully vested in Consolidated Bank. So they really just want Unibank back. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. Yes, that's, that's essentially what they're asking. And they have attacked 
the consolidated bank yes, they which have. is which which which, which is uh, not difficult to understand because consolidated bank now has in its possession assets good assets of Unibank. Unibank, yes. So and any other reliefs which this honourable court deems fit or considers just. <laughs> why, did you, why did you state that one with such passion and such... <laughs> because such, on top of everything force. else, and that too. So that is pretty much um, what the, the yes. suit is, so, is so, about. So um, just before that, the one you read was a mandatory injunction requiring the Bank of Ghana to restore Unibank to private management. Yes, and, and the shareholders. And, and share, shareholding. Yeah. Yeah, so Daniel, those are the, the things that they are asking from the courts, and we have just given you the basis upon which they think, the basis upon which they found this request to the court to order the Bank of Ghana to do the things that they want done, that's the release that they are seeking. You know, listening to you guys, you know my point of curiosity. Unibank is saying they were not insolvent. Second, Unibank is saying, I mean, sorry, Dr. Dufour, mm -hmm. can we then say that they were saying they were not insolvent? That's essentially what they are, what they are arguing because if they say if they had been given the opportunity, they would have injected more capital and they have given indications that they have done this in the past and so they are capable of doing this. Except that some raised the question and I, I, I hope that we can, we can retrieve the conversation we had with the Deputy Governor of the Bank of Ghana, um, Mrs. Elsie Awaji, in which she said that there had been a back and forth between Unibank and the Central Bank, dating back to 2014, 2015, where they had to give some liquidity support and where they requested for some information. And the information that was supplied, sometimes it was not supplied at all. Other times when the information was supplied, the integrity of that information could not be vouched for. And she said... <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. So she, she, time. she insisted in that interview with us that... At some point in time, they had to take the decision that they took because they could no longer rely on information, and this is what she claimed, they could no longer rely on right. information supplied by Unibank, which then is a certain explanation for the reason why the Bank of Ghana may engage in the unreg unregular visit or the regular irregular. irregular visit. Thank you. But you see, that is where the issue is because that is why I asked that question of, are they saying... I first made the statement, I corrected myself. It's really a question I'm asking. Are they saying that they were insolvent? Because they, quite, they say that the Bank of Ghana, you deliberately downgraded the loans on our books. Mm -hmm. It is only after you did that thing on purpose that we became insolvent. So, so their question, capital adequacy ratio then dropped from to the point where yeah. To so negative, yeah. to so negative 24%. 10 .7 to 8 .24 to 4.24 down to negative 2. Point, negative 24. 24 point as of December. In fact, when KPMG had finished its work in August, in, in August, mm -hmm. their capital adequacy was negative 74. Wow. But also, when KPMG asked for cash, if they really could um, raise the capital, why didn't they? No, anyway, the, the point is that, that Unibank is saying. You didn't need to come. You didn't need to appoint KPMG in the first yes, place. Yes, but now that KPMG before, has remember, been remember, appointed. before KPMG was appointed, you held three different on-site examinations. You deliberately downgraded my books. In, and including the, government, government the of whole, Ghana. Your whole mindset at the point was you wanted to take my bank. Okay, so why the question to Unibank then is that why didn't you do whatever it is that you think that you can do now then? Why did you not do anything as, 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 it, as it were? The other thing in response to um, the argument about the downgrading is that we know that the issues predated last year. The mm -hmm. issues predated the downgrading of, of, of the system. We know that if our just statement to us on SMS, uh, Super Morning Show, are to be believed, that they started having all this back and forth with Unibank from 2015. There was a first assets quality review then in 2016. Absolutely. That's when there was a happen. review of that. Um, in 2016, there were nine banks in trouble. Unibank was one of them. Yes. Their CAR was 4.75%. Their capital adequacy rate. However, the bank says in July 2017. A year later. Their CAR was 10 was yep, 10.4%. Because they had percent. injected capital into There the was bank. Capital had been injected. Yes. So there was, the CAR was 10.24%. However, just after that, they decided to go and do further investigations. And then they downgraded the loan books. Now, Unibank is saying that that downgrade of loan books that you did was deliberate on your part. The reason I'm raising all of this is 
one of the questions I had in my mind was the question anymore asked. That if you felt at that point, and there was a letter written by Dr. Kwabdu, well, signed by Professor Newman Kusi, whom we spoke to yesterday, to the Bank of Ghana that we had. We read it out a few days back. That letter stated clearly, that was in January 2018, that letter stated clearly that they did not understand why those on-site examinations were made. He, they even went on to say that for Unibank, they will recognize the official status of their capital adequacy, which was 10.24%. That is what they would work with. So my question, after all of that, why, why didn't we go to court in March when KPMG was appointed? Yeah. That's number one. Number two, the Bank of Ghana said um, Unibank officials prevented the Bank of Ghana officials from going, from doing, performing on-site examinations at a point. Unibank officials at the time did not submit monthly reports in January and in February. Why? Except that the response to the issue about why didn't they go to court when that official administrator was respond, was was appointed, appointed. the response is, can be that in the press release that was sent out by the Bank of Ghana itself announcing the appointment of the official administrator, the Bank of Ghana said that the job the official administrator was supposed to do was to steer Unibank out of its troubles and to make it a viable, sustainable business. No, but I am not in that, trouble. You have appointed an administrator to steer me. Me, I'm not in trouble. The more you go and tell people that I'm in trouble, the thank you. Of For yes. the, the, what you are saying, if you keep telling people that I'm in trouble, my depositors will lose faith and take their money. I can lose business. What if I'm looking for an international... In fact, one of the letters that they have, they were looking for an international tra strategic partner. What if I want to go public and get more funding from abroad? How many international strategic partners would want to invest in such a company? But which is under administration. Which if has even been... Uh, so my question it really is, a why now? It, it, it's a matter of choice. Because at the time, if... Well, the Bank of Ghana said you have issues and it's appointed an official administrator. You were entitled to believe that the Bank of Ghana was acting in good faith and to, re to rely on the Bank of Ghana's express statements that... KPMG's task was to steer the bank and to keep it viable. And you had promised depositors that their money was safe and that the bank was solvent. And I remember. But was that, that the view of in the... the in, in the interview with mm. Awaji, she actually told us, and you and I have had this discussion before, that she didn't anticipate any more banks uh, falling into the problems that Capital Bank, UT Bank and Unibank had. Do you remember? No, you have that? to separate those two. Capital Bank and UT Bank happened last year. No, no I'm saying And Unibank that, happened in March. And I'm saying that... And we've that had conversations with, us, with her. So, you're talking about in March. When, when she was talking about the Unibank one, there was a okay. question about how sure are we when she was saying that people should have faith and confidence in Unibank and keep their money there, that they can have access to it, they can continue to transact business with Unibank, and that... The task of the official administrator is to steer Unibank out of its troubles and that the bank was would, would become viable. When the question was asked about whether other, um, other local banks would fall yeah. into the kind of situation that Unibank was, she said no, she didn't foresee that happening. Yeah. And I'm saying that we know that with the benefit of hindsight, uh, we couldn't really rely on that. But Unibank can argue that they were entitled to rely on what the Bank of Ghana said. Okay. And I'm saying this to just make the point that when they chose to sue, um, we can't make an issue out of it. But of course, we know that Unibank's issues actually predated the downgrading of the, 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 the books okay. and the loans on the books on the basis of which, which is the major plank of this case. Right. The, the issues predated that. Malik, thanks a lot. This conversation is not over. What we've been doing this morning on the Super Morning Show is that we have been reading and um, presenting to you sections of the writ that Unibank has presented. It, it, the shareholders of Unibank, I, keep, I need to stop saying that. The shareholders of Unibank have presented. So the shareholders of Unibank are taking the Bank of Ghana to court. They have asked the court to make the Bank of Ghana reverse their decision to revoke their license. We'll take um, these important messages. When we come back, we'll continue with the analysis and then we'll hear Professor Newman Kojo Kusi, what he has to say. Professor Kusi made an interesting statement about the 
action that the Bank of Ghana took at the end of our interview yesterday. So we would hear him and then the conversation continues. But before we go, a pipeline has burst at Tesano around MISP International School since last week. We are calling on the Ghana Water Company Limited to immediately see to that. A burst pipeline at Tesano around MISP International School since last week. Stay with us. This is the Super Morning Show. Hi, I'm Nicholas Kwesi Tete. I'm working with VRA at the MIS department. And my journey with VRA started when I was posted by NSS after completing my first degree at Blue Crest College. I recommend Blue Crest College for those who are looking for a bright career in ICT. With an alumni base of 1,500 plus from different nationalities, to tell you why Blue Crest College is a preferred destination for higher education. For ICT, banking and finance, human resource management, logistics, oil and gas, fashion and journalism, choose Blue Crest College. For admission, call or WhatsApp 0263 011 390 or 0275 207 783. Visit our website bluecrest.edu.ga. Blue Crest College. Education for life. It's time to experience something different, unexpected, and definitely beyond banking. It's a new era at GCB Bank, Ghana's most welcoming bank, where we offer you a world of financial security, flexibility, and convenience. We swiftly serve you with over 180 branches and 300 ATMs and provide e-banking solutions that make it possible for you to bank anywhere, anytime. When you need a personal loan, sooner is better than later, so we give it to you in 24 hours to make sure the experience is always memorable. At GCB, your opportunities are limitless and we keep you smiling at all times. We're bigger and better, ready to take you beyond banking. GCB Bank, your bank for life. The Buzia Institute for Rural and Democratic Development, BIRDD, and the entire Buzia family invites you to the 40th anniversary lecture celebrating the legacy of Dr. Kofi Abrefa Buzia. Tuesday, the 28th of August, 3 p.m. at the Accra International Conference Center. Come as we celebrate the life and values of Dr. Kofi Abrefa Buzia. Special guest of honor, His Excellency the President, Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado. The Buzia Institute for Rural and Democratic Development BIRDD projects and protects the vision, works, and legacy of Dr. Kofi Abrefa Buzia, which primarily had to do with rural development, democracy, and education. We entreat all who believe in the vision and values of Dr. Buzia to participate in the 40th anniversary lecture. Remember, it's Tuesday, the 28th of August, 3 p.m. at the Accra International Conference Center. All are welcome. How are you doing, my brother? I'm having problems as an architect getting quality security products on the market. Asa Abloy is your one-stop shop for your needs. They have strong padlocks with double locking systems. They also have security doors, hydraulic door closers, hinges, and mechanical locks, pull handles for glass, wooden, and aluminum doors. Also in stock are the Yale Smart Home Alarm System. They have access control for offices, residents, and schools, hotel electronic locks, and safes. You can find Asa Abloy in Accra, adjacent MTN office on the 11th lane, Osu, Takrade, Kumase, Tamale. You can reach Asa Abloy on 0302 778 or 050 for further details. Time waits for no man. The future belongs to the brave. Nothing comes without a fight. Fight for a better future. Fight to change the world. Make your mark at Academic City College with its new campus in Hacho Accra. With activity-based learning and premium teaching talent, take your education beyond the theoretical classroom. Visit www.acghana.com. Admissions open now for September 2018. Academic City, unlocking potential, one leader at a time. Now, so many reasons for me to be thankful When I cast my mind back, oh God, I'm graceful Send me cry, baby, I'm free, no one was helpful All I had was to see the in a dream in my team But now we be balling, we be jamming every day Kids make a add aroma, me too, I get 100k Plus a record deal, Charlie had work, beat pace And I shows after shows, I set the place of pace My dream was legit, all I needed was a push One of the girl songs, the Jennifer Lomote architect Kitty, the other hit maker And the multiple award-winning rock star, Kwame Eugene Then, Ghana's authentic and most 
Hitmaker Award and Music Show Beacons MT and Hitmaker Season 7 Download the Hitmaker app from Google Play Store to register Follow the prompts and stand the chance to win a whooping 100,000 Ghana CDs recording deal Send your comments on MT and Hitmaker app at MT and Hitmaker on Twitter and Facebook Or WhatsApp us on 0551 300 000 MT and Hitmaker 7 Rule the mic everywhere you go MTN Welcome back from those important messages. This is the Super Morning Show. Enjoy 99.7 FM. We've been talking about that lawsuit that Unibank shareholders of what used to be Unibank have brought against uh, the officials of the Bank of Ghana. Basically, they are saying that the status of Unibank was downgraded on three separate occasions deliberately by the Bank of Ghana to put them in a place where the Bank of Ghana will just take their license. And so the court should ask the Bank of Ghana to give them back their bank. And a few questions have been raised. I mean, why now? The official administrator KPMG was appointed back in March. And in January, Unibank shareholder at the time wrote to the Bank of Ghana to ask them why there have been such frequent visits. In fact, in the letter, the Unibank shareholder stated that they will not regard the new capital adequacy ratio that was put up in those subsequent reports. In those surprise visits. So, I mean, why didn't they go to court then? Why didn't they contest the Bank of Ghana's decision then? Of course, these are simply questions. We'll, we'll be going into the uh, real analysis. We'll be speaking with Dr. Dro Sai. He's also a lawyer. He'll be telling us what the implications of this decision are and his views on some of these issues. Before we go to him, the date was 6 September 2008 at the National Theatre and all three floors of its auditorium were filled with highly expectant patrons. The counsellor, preacher, radio segments presenter and motivational speaker, Uncle Bo White cemented yet another description playwright to his name. Then he made an emphatic promise. A brand new, original and world-class play every quarter. What? Are they crazy? Well, crazy or not, Roverman Productions was born. That first play, Unhappy Wives, Confused Husbands, opened a new page in theatre in Ghana and sold out show after show. Well, here we are, 10 years after, riding through almost 40 plays and consistently keeping that promise alive. Uncle Abel White and the Roverman Productions team sends our heartfelt gratitude. And thanks to all partners, sponsors, patrons, media, etc. for 10 years of awesome support. Join us at the National Theatre on the 1st, 2nd, 8th and 9th of September to toast out the old and cheering the new Roverman decade. It's a crazy ride and you can't miss it. Stand by for further details. Roverman Productions, be the difference. Now, the Buzia Institute for Rural and Democratic Development, BIRDD, and the entire Buzia family wish to invite the general public to the 40th anniversary lecture celebrating the legacy of Dr. Kofi Abrifa Buzia. Join us on Tuesday, August 28, 2018, at 3 p.m. at the Accra International Conference Center as we celebrate the life of Dr. K. A. Buzia and the values he stood for. The special guest of honor is His Excellency Nana Adudankwa Ekufuado. 
forget the business side of life and feel your heydays for once. Sip, uh, slip down memory lane to the crazy, sophisticated, old school spirit and unwind the night away as the Pediasi Valley Resort. By popular demand and a change of pace, come and experience the fun and artistic qualities of an 80s night. The night brings together a trendy public as well as enthusiasts, professionals and celebrities. The venue is Pediasi Valley Resort. Date or time is 1st September 2018, 6pm till you drop. Dress code is 80s night apparel or casual. Entry rate is 100 Ghana cities. Call for VIP seats and tickets. Special rates for bed and breakfast is $140 per night. It promises to be creative, festive, unexpected with lots of music, wine and food and barbecue and many more. Call Monday or Bridget for entry tickets, VIP seats or all VIP seats on 0540-124-393 or 240 Two four nine five three nine. Limited tickets and rooms available. Call now. Now, Africa is full of potential. People are getting things done. Businesses are on the rise. And APSA Group is tapping into this can-do spirit. As one of the largest companies listed on the JSE Top 40 Index on Africa's largest stock exchange, APSA Group delivers award-winning expertise to enable people and businesses to realize their possibilities daily. APSA Group proudly serving Ghana as Barclays. For more, visit www.apsa.africa. Governance expert Dr. Odro Osai has joined us on the phone to look at the implications of all these issues, particularly the lawsuit on the banking sector and the economy. Good morning, Dr. Osai. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, my brother. Hope all is well this morning. It's well. Great. So Unibank, uh, the shareholders of what used to be Unibank, have sent the Bank of Ghana to court. In the first place, how possible is it to reverse a decision as uh, as comprehensive as the one the Bank of Ghana took the beginning of August? Thank you very much. Um, I think it's a very tall order because they are applying for an interlocutory injunction. They are applying for an injunction for a reversal of a decision. And uh, when I look at their uh, statement of claims, it's interesting. And um, I, they, they will find it difficult to prove most of the issues they indicated there. For instance, if you said you want an order restraining the defendant from uh, expropriating the Unibank's assets to another bank, then it means you have to prove about five things. The first one is you have to demonstrate that you have some legal or equitable rights that could be affected to in law. Two, they may have to prove that it is just for them, for the court to give them, and convenient for the court to give them what they are asking for. The third one is that they should be able to indicate that they will suffer certain irreparable damages which cannot be remedied by the award of damages. The final one that they need to prove is that they need to indicate whether um, they can be adequately compensated in the event that they are granted the injunction. I must say that it is a tall order. But the question I'm asking is that they have made a number of assertions in their statement of claim, and that is the area Ghanaians should interrogate. One, is it true that they are expecting some receivables from central government, which if central government pays, is likely to show up their asset base, which will move them from the current capital adequacy ratio where they are to another level? Is it also true that the Ministry of Finance had indicated to them earlier on that they have not validated the claims they claim government owed them. If it is true, then why this suit? The last one is that, is it the case that the shareholders of the bank had indicated earlier on that they are prepared to inject more capital or more funds into the organization to improve their capital base? The solution is that, it is not about the shareholders injecting capital into the business. The issue has to do with system structures and corporate governance operations of the organization, which we need to put in place before additional funds are pumped into it. So I think it is a tall order. But I'm satisfied by the fact that it will also push central government to come out and tell their story. They will come out and tell Ghanaians, why have they sat down all this while to allow this to happen? Up until now, I want to believe that Central government have not told us the whole story. But now, through the courts, and with this particular risk, they will be compelled to tell us the whole story. Dr. Drosai, you mentioned that 
it would serve us better to look at some of the claims that are being made in the in the writ. Hello. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. I, I'm I'm looking at a number of these claims, and here we find the shareholders of what used to be Unibank talking about how from last year the central bank seemed to be on a mission to down, to make Unibank look bad so that they can expropriate Unibank. Uh, In, that would be a, a very difficult order to prove. And I, my experience in finance tells me that if you, the auditors are visit, visiting you on a number of occasions, it means there is something fundamentally wrong with your system. BOG is a regulator. And I think BOG would have themselves to blame because they visited them and they found that corporate governance structures were not going on well. What they should have done was to come out and then apply the law there. there. But they did not do that. They tried managing it because it was an indigenous bank, I believe. They tried managing it so that at least it will not collapse the banking sector. That is how come we are where we are. My belief is that it will be a tall order for them. I, my friend, Professor Atukuba, is a very good lawyer, and I'm happy he is handling this case. But if you indicate or you claim that your right under uh, Article 23 has been violated, and the fact that Article 296 has also been infringed upon, it gives you a very tall order. Mm. But then again, would it be out of place to say that the Bank of Ghana, for Unibank, to say that the Bank of Ghana is out to get them, looking at where things have ended now, looking at the fact that Unibank is no more, the assets have been transferred to Consolidated Bank. From the perspective of the shareholder, would it be out of place to say this could be legitimate? It, it may not be legitimate at all. Um, if the shareholders believe they have a right, I was expecting the shareholders to go to court on their own accord, not riding on the back of the bank. The shareholders and their management, the management of Unibank stands in a fiduciary position with the shareholders. The shareholders are clothed with the right capacity and, and authority to go to court on issues like this. But I do not believe and do not think that they have a case if they think that the Bank of Ghana is picking them on unnecessarily. Because most of the things that were happening with the bank were, did not come to the attention of the shareholders until an annual general meeting. So they should be careful about the way they proceed. They should be sure they have all available information to enable them to proceed. But in my view, I think they also have a very tall order to go. But in all of this, I think the legal battle is good for sanity in the banking sector. It will push Bank of Ghana to tell us the, so the story. But I am happy that the current leadership of the Bank of Ghana is applying the rule as they ought to be to sanitize the system. You've gone into my next question because I wanted to find out from you what you think this legal battle means for the banking sector in general. But however, tell me, what do you think a victory for Unibank shareholders would mean? For the banking sector in general, this is a bank that has already been consolidated, consolidated bank. And Unibank is asking that a fifth of it is taken out and given back to them. What does it mean for banking in Ghana? Um, as a lawyer, if I am in this case, a victory for um, Unibank means deconsolidating the consolidated bank to allow the Unibank to be restored as a universal bank and their licenses were restored. What it then again means is that for the banking sector is that all the other banks that were put together as a consolidated bank can also go to court and challenge the authority of the consolidated bank. And it then also means that the integrity of the Bank of Ghana had then been put on the line because it then tells us that the Bank of Ghana did not proceed well as a regulatory institution. But like I said earlier on, it is a tall order for Unibank. Well, you have made that point, but some would say that this suit by the shareholders in the first place, it is fatal to the ongoing reforms that are being undertaken. As you say in your state, as you said earlier, the, it, it would make the Bank of Ghana, the credibility of the, the Bank of Ghana would be brought into, into question. I mean, they are saying clearly that you did this on purpose. Um, what, what do you say to that? No, I, I, I do not see it like that. That's why I, I am of the view that it will be difficult for them to win this case. Uh, however, um, the, 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 the judgment is, is in the bosom of the judge. The law is in the bosom of the judge. But I, I believe that it's a very good attempt by the shareholders. It is a way of also uh, acting as a wake-up call on all shareholders in this country to be able to exercise their rights. They should not sit down and wait to receive reports at an annual general meeting. Occasionally, they should request for... Um, 
interim information that will help them take decisions. But I think I can tell you that it is a tall order. But if they win, it is fatal to the banking sector because it then, it then means that our regulator is very weak and they have refused to perform their regulatory functions or they've gotten it wrong from day one. And then it then requires of us as a nation to purge the entire Bank of Ghana system to restructure it in such a way that they'll be able to stand on their feet and perform their supervisory and regulatory functions as required by the Bank of Ghana Act. But this is not a position you agree with. You've said earlier that you've congratulated the Bank of Ghana in this, con- in this conversation we've had. Yes, I congratulated the Bank of Ghana for the current move to sanitize the system and apply the law. I can tell you that if Bank of Ghana had moved 10 years back, 10 years back, 5 years back in this direction, we wouldn't have been where we are today. I think they tried managing it, and it, it escalated. So I congratulated them for their current move to sanitize the system. Right. But if the move they've made, they did not consider the legal factors that would help them become successful, they would also fail, and that would put their integrity on the line. Okay. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, Dr. Drosai, before you go, you have talked about how you feel shareholders themselves must be more proactive in getting information and seeing what happens in the bank. Yesterday, we had a, a member of the board of, the, of, the, of Unibank, what used to be Unibank, with us in studio. Can you tell us in, in, a, in a heartbeat, with things like this going on, I'm sure you've seen or heard some of the things that happened with the KPMG, in the KPMG report. With things like this going on, what is the role of a board member of a bank? The role of a board member of Unibank should have been to provide direction and make sure that the bank is apply, complying with corporate governance, good corporate governance standards and complying with law. If they fail to do that, then it means they have, um, as it were, uh, managing role or uh, damage control role to play. Now, board of directors or board members cannot absorb themselves from what is happening now. All the board members should accept that they failed to continuously police the system. All the board members should accept that at least they saw the signs on the wall and they should be able to convince us that they were doing something about it. But for now, I think they have to just put the pieces together and try to ensure that they join forces with the shareholders to defend their son. If it fails, they should admit that they fail. Uh, Doc, if I'm to understand what you're saying, you're saying that they should do their best to save face. Is that what you're saying? Sorry? Yeah, what, what, what I'm saying is that they should do their best to put the pieces together because they're, they're, they don't run away, they don't leave the bank like that to fight it alone. They don't leave shareholders to fight it alone because the shareholders elected them as board of directors to provide direction to lead the bank. Okay. The bank is at this level or is at this stage this is the time for them to look at what went wrong. They should, all, they should do a self-introspection and do their own due diligence and be able to partner with the regulatory authorities that matters to bring the bank to life. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Eric Odrosai, for joining us this morning. He is a governance expert. He was, he's also a lawyer, and he was giving us his view on this issue that we have been talking about since morning. He believes that it will be very difficult for Unibank shareholders to win this case. He stated that categorically. He's also said that the Bank of Ghana was very bold in the decision that they took and they should have taken this decision some 10 years ago. And finally, he said that if Unibank should Unibank shareholders should win this case, what this means is that all the other banks within the Consolidated Bank 5 could also go on and take similar cases and also win, get out of the Consolidated Bank. And it would mean a lot for the credibility of the Bank of Ghana in so many words, it would be very bad for the banking sector of Ghana. You're still listening to the Super Morning Show on Joy, 99.7 FM. I asked that last question of the role of a board member because, as you know, we're going to hear Dr. Professor Newman Kujo Kusi, who was a board member of Unibank. But before we hear him, let's take these important messages. When we come back, we'll do the Joy Business Minute and then we'll hear that interview with Professor Newman Kujo Kusi. Stay with us. At AfroDan, we believe that many of the problems people have with their health is as a result of the way they sit. In other words, your chair can kill you. Here's Dr. Marcus Mann of the Chiropractic and Wellness Center. What you have to remember is that the spine is the lifeline to your body. And posture is the window to that spine. Now, posture is affected by your daily activities and habits like sitting. 
That's why at the Chiropractic and Wellness Centers, we recommend what I believe to be the best chairs available for preventing not only subluxations, but also other health problems that you may not be aware of, and that's Rabami and Mobilex chairs. Unfortunately, on a daily basis, I have to correct the effects of this poor sitting habit in our businessmen and businesswomen. Always remember, optimal spine equals optimum health. So, for the sake of your health, buy Robami or Mobilex chairs from Afrodan. We are on the first floor of the Swansea Shopping Arcade. Telephone 663-085. Hey, Kwame, hmm. what's up here? My brother, my wife has been diagnosed with cancer. What? Uh, my brother is here with kidney disease too. Oh, yeah. Do you know the World Health Organization estimates that over 16,000 new cases of cancers are diagnosed annually in Ghana? And kidney diseases account for 10% of all medical admissions to Kolibu. But thanks to Glycocritical Illness Plan, Jesse, I have spent over 20,000 Ghana cities on my younger brother's disease. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what is Jesse? Glycocritical Illness Plan, GSIP, provides you with financial support when diagnosed with any critical illness or dread disease such as cancers, strokes, kidney failures. Speak to Glycolife today on 0302 218 for your GSIP policy. It is definitely in our interest to survive. Glycolife, we cushion you for life. Possibilities. Africa is filled with them. People are going places. Businesses are starting up. Things are happening on our continent every day. And as a forward-looking organization, we believe there's no better time or place to do business than right now in Africa. That's why as one of the largest companies listed on the JSE Top 40 Index on Africa's largest stock exchange, we deliver world-class expertise to grow businesses. So, if you want to go from local to International, we are a truly African organization with global reach. APSA Group, proudly serving Ghana as Barclays. For more, visit APSA.Africa. This message is brought to you by APSA Group Limited. Well, welcome to the Joy Business Minutes. Daryl and Karen with the latest. Power Bank has denied reports that one of its traders was able to steal some 255 million CDs from the bank. The bank rather puts the amount at 110 million CDs and says it was stopped when its own system detected the fraud. Six banks have been shortlisted as likely arrangers of a 2.3 billion Ghana CD loan for the GET Fund. The Daily Graphic reports the banks are looking for an opportunity to raise the total amount or part of it. Some CSOs in agriculture are raising red flags about attempts by some foreign companies to push what they describe as poisonous sees onto Ghanaian farms. And Facebook and Twitter say they have suspended or removed the accounts linked to Iran and Russia over inauthentic and manipulating behavior. More than 650 Facebook pages and groups were said to have been identified as misleading. And those are the latest stories. Join us again at 306. Hello, madam. Mommy has malaria. She said I should come and buy hexapin and agrizone and talimodino nabutolosis. Hey, Bayo, this malaria and you are stressing like this? Get Novamita. Novamita kills malaria parasites and comes in a special pack that fits into your pocket, wallet, or purse. So you never forget your daily dose. And if she has resultant anemia, give her Threefa. Threefa is a blood tonic. Always get tested for malaria before taking medications. If you are pregnant or a lactating mother, Seek medical advice first. If symptoms persist after three days, consult your doctor. Novamita and Tuifa is manufactured and distributed by Famanova Limited. Locate them at Osu at number 3 or Kodan Street or call 054-311-7194. Novamita, sorts with malaria, one touch. Any Tuifa, anemia, away. Novamita. Shower to kill malaria. The Rusa Bank in town, solid and strong, giving you the service you desire. It's commerce, savings, and loans. We give you financial security you deserve through our Susu account, church account, fixed account, kitty account, and many more. Our duty loan for churches, asset finance, federal loans, and others have interest rates that are perfect for any pocket. At commerce, savings, and loans, we make life convenient for you. Make payments on all mobile networks, pay for DST. TV, mobile money, TV license, and many others. Call us on 0302-767-827 or 667-783. Commerce Savings and Loan. We offer you a relationship beyond... 
I tell to go spoil the big time. Sir, sir. Some new big time bundles view. The only bundles I want here about are bundles of cash. So what about a bundle that gives you the most data on your one, two, and five Ghana City bundles than anywhere else? And also gives you a whole 1.5 gig for only 10 Ghana City. Please, no network could give you that much data at that price. Sir. Well, Etel Tigo does. And you even get a big two gig for the same 10 Ghana cities when you bundle directly from an Etel Tigo scratch card or with Etel Tigo money. Hey, Etel Tigo's new big time bundles do not expire. You can browse, sir. No more daily, weekly, or monthly bundles. Hey, bad, 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 bad. How do I subscribe? Dial star 111 hash, select big time bundles, and browse, sir. Whether you're a new subscriber or an old subscriber, T's and C's apply. Get big time data from the network that gives you the most. Airtel Tigo. Did you know that bed bags are dangerous insect pests that cause sleeplessness, tiredness, body rushes, anemia due to blood loss, and general discomfort to humans? Unfortunately, they are so difficult to get rid of. They spread in your beddings, your child's beddings in boarding schools, bags, lockers, clothes, everywhere. You may not see them all, but they are there. That's why you need the Inner Spry Bed Bag Solution. A ready to use effective solution. All you have to do is shake it and spray infested areas. Wait for it to dry and that's it. Yes, spray the bed bugs out with Innisfly Bed Bug Solution now. Households, boarding schools, and other institutions with minor and major bed bug infestations. Call 057 7701000. Innisfly, beautiful protection. Welcome to Anchmans University College of Health Sciences, the newest health university college here in Ghana, poised to add in value to the pharmaceutical industry in the country. Anchmans was set up to meet the high demand for research and in-depth knowledge for pharmacy. We are accredited by the National Accreditation Board, affiliated with the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Students have the unique opportunity to a hands-on training with the Entrance University Hospital and the Entrance Pharmaceutical and Research Center. School start in September 2018. Call us on 050-908-6631 or 050-908-6651. Enroll now. You can locate us at Opoigono of the Spintash Road, Accra. Entrance University College of Health Sciences your preferred choice for pharmaceutical and allied health training. The biggest African stars are coming. Ghana, are you ready? Glow presents Mega Music with Sarkodie, Whiskey, Davido, Stone Boy, Techno, Yamiya Lade, Flavor, Diamond Platinum. Can you cook your music? Wami Eugen. Hey, you want, Pata Pa. Bangwana, Bangwana, Bangwana. Glow Mega Music. Catch Africa's mega stars at the Fantasy Dome Accra on August 25th and September 22nd. Just dial star 5301 hash. I use 20 Ghana CDs on voice or 30 Ghana CDs on voice and data to gain entry. The Grandmasters of Data. Glow Ghana. Mr. Bossman, with all these computers, servers, and electronic equipment, I know they see one cable for the floor, right? Charlie, you be right, too. We they use raised access floors from Interface, so all the cables they hide under the raised access floors, too. This be the solution to the plenty cables where they my computer room for office. Accountant, call Interface now! If you're involved in new property development, renovation, or decoration, the right place for you is Interface Limited. Call us on 0274-999999 or visit our website at www www.interfacelimited.com Coffee in your cup and joy on the set. The Super Morning Show is always the best bet on Joy 99.7 FM. Six minutes past nine on the Super Morning Show. Enjoy 99.7 FM. I am Daniel Dazi here with my friend Tenima Enimado and Malik Abbas Dabo. We've been talking to Dr. Eric Odrosai, who made three major statements about the Unibank court case against the Bank of Ghana. He has said that, first of all, it will be a very, very difficult case for Unibank shareholders to win. 
And he said, among other things, that if they should win, well, it means that the Bank of Ghana would lose credibility. It will have dire consequences for the financial sector. Very soon, we'll be hearing from Professor Newman Kojo Kusi. He is a non-executive board member of what used to be Unibank. That conversation we had yesterday, you've been asking us to bring it back to you. We will be bringing it back to you. But it's a fabulous back-to-school offer at Roberts & Sons Optical Services. Bring your kids to any of our branches in Adenta, Weja, Adabraka, Osudankwa, Seiko, Tema, and Kumase and get a 10% discount on your total purchase of their spectacles. Kids between age 16 and 18, sorry, 8 and 16, can also get a comprehensive eye test for free. Yes, it's free eye testing for kids between 8 and 16. Terms and conditions apply. Please call us or send us a WhatsApp message on 50 151 9111 050-151-9111 Don't miss out on this offer for our kids. Visit us now. Robertson Sons Optical Services. Seeing is believing. Now, the government of Ghana has instituted a group life insurance package for both teaching and non-teaching staff of GES to ensure that every staff of GES has a minimum level of insurance cover and also to complement the existing funeral grant. The underwriter is SIC Life Company Limited. The package covers natural or accidental death, permanent disability and critical illness. Contributions will be deducted through the controller and accountant general's department. Premium deductions will be done at the end of September 2018, whilst cover starts from 1st September 2018. Non-interested members should complete an exit and refund form and send to the district education office by 31st August 2018 to avoid any premium payment by the government. Claims are simple. Staff or beneficiaries must submit a written notification from a teacher union or GES, completed death or claim form or medical form in the case of critical illness to SIC Life Offices or GES for processing and claims will be paid within seven working days. Now, ICGC Holy Ghost Temple invites the general public to a spiritual emphasis program beginning Tuesday, 28th August to Friday, 31st August 2018. It's the month of new beginnings. Come and receive spirit-led ministrations from Reverend Eastwood Anaba, President of Eastwood Anaba Ministries, and host pastor, Prophet Christopher Yao Ano, ICGC Holy Ghost Temple. Time is 6.30 p.m. each night. Venue is Holy Ghost Temple located at South Frafraha on the Dodowa Road. Text messages are brought to you by Afro Daniel Bachman slash your lifetime and Glyco Travel Insurance Policy. We cushion you for life. Afrodan is offering you today the most comfortable chair in the world, the Nightingale Extreme Comfort Chair. With over 10 thoughtfully engineered features, especially customized for your health and comfort. So go to Afrodan on the first floor of the Swansea Shopping Arcade and feel this chair. You will be amazed. So let's cut to the chase. Let's hear Professor Newman Kojo Kusi. He is a former non-executive board member of now defunct Unibank. He speaks for Dr. Kwamna Dufour, the shareholder of Unibank. Listen. It's a major concern that the Bank of Ghana has not treated uh, Unibank and, and the shareholders of Unibank uh, uh, justifiably, you know, at all, you know, because Bank of Ghana appointed an official administrator or Bank of Ghana before then you know, had uh, identified some weaknesses in the bank. And based on that, they appointed an official administrator, you know, to look at things and those type of things. We were hoping that after the official administrator to work, the shareholders' attention will be brought into the issues that have been picked up and then allow the shareholder or request the shareholder to try to make amends or deal with the issues, you know, giving some time frame or what. And if after that, the shareholder is unable to ratify the things or the issues that have been raised by the official administrator and then action is taken, then that is justifiable. But here, you know, the official administrator submitted his report. The shareholder asked for a copy of the report that was not that was not given, you know. And then all of a sudden, you know, the bank of the took an action. And in fact, and in fact, for me personally, what pains me is that the Bank of Ghana was up to date did not even write to tell the shareholder that based on our investigation, this is the action that we're going to take. The shareholders heard about the decisions that the Bank of Ghana uh, 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 took on the radio through the press press statement, which means that the Bank of Ghana completely just ignored, you know, you know, the shareholder and uh, went about, you know, to do whatever that that it it it, it wants to. Now the question is, 
if you look at the very act which permitted them to appoint official administrator in the section 115 114 that we're talking about that section says that in a situation like uh, 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 Unibank Fund itself, you know, the official administrator or the Bank of Ghana should ask the shareholders, you know, should uh, 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 release or give additional shares to the shareholders as a way of recapitalizing the bank. And after that, if the shareholders were unable to purchase the new shares that we granted to, to them, you know, they should sell the additional shares to other share, other other potential shareholders and do so. None of these things was 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 taken. You know, and then also the bankers, in fact, the way they want it back, it's not uh, a, a dissolution of the, actually, it's an expropriation of a private asset, you know, without giving the, the owners any chance at all, you know, to deal, to deal with it. So, so, so that is, that, that is, that's, that's the concern of, of, of the shareholders. When you say expropriation, what do you mean? It means that somebody has got an asset, of course, you are a regulator. Okay, and then you said that uh, you found some uh, weaknesses in the bank. You appointed somebody to come and have a look. There's somebody, that person did his work. He submitted a report. A copy of the report was not given to the shareholder. So as we said now, other than those reports that has been leaked into the media and those type of things, the shareholder officially does not know what the KPMG found. And based on that, you collapse the bank. And not only collapse it, you make you make it with other bank with some different, you know, different reasons and they immediately establish a bank again you know to take over the assets and the liabilities of 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 unibank what 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 description can you give to this type of action right uh, an amount of 5.3 billion ghana cities constituting 75 percent of total assets of the bank they broke it down in this way shareholders and related parties uh, unibank had given out amounts totaling 1.6 billion ghana cities to shareholders and related parties in the forms of loans and advances without due process and in relevant provisions of Act 930. Um, what's your response to this? Well, <laughs> this, report, this report that was uh, produced by KPMG, the same KPMG uh, in that report, and in the covering letter for that report to the Bank of Ghana, stated that that report should not be looked at as an audit report because it did not conduct an audit. The same uh, company also went on to say to say that they have obtained information from the staff and from the records of the bank, but this information and so were not verified to establish the authenticity of these type of things, and so therefore, with, without their prior written consent, you know those reports should not be used and they cannot vouch for the authenticity and those and those type of things so with that a whole administrator has been appointed giving specific work to be done they finish the work they submit the work to the bank of ghana and they issue this type of disclaimer so what can you say about that report i'm actually if reading people, mm. if those who conducted the research are using this disclaimer sir, yes this is what we found were unable to, you know, establish whether they are true or not, and so, so and so, and therefore, please don't give the report to anybody, and also don't take actions. You must be very careful about the actions that you take based on what we have submitted to you. Now, my question is that, what can you do with such a report? So, if you ask me that, what, 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 what's my reaction to that? I'm telling you that, as far as I'm concerned, and from what the official administrator itself has said it means that no action can be taken based on that report. So if the Bank of Ghana wanted to use that report as the basis of taking action, they should have said, okay, look, but we, we wanted to take action. That's why we have been sent you there. But why do you give us a report from which you are issuing this strong disclaimer and, uh, and those stuff? So what do you expect us to do with, the, with this report? But the Bank of Ghana ignored this thing that KPMG wrote and then use that report and to take decisions. So if you ask me what, what is, what, what, what's my view, my view is that as far as I'm concerned and from what the KPMG is saying, the report is not something based on which the Bank of Ghana should have taken the decision. So you disagree with the decision the Bank of Ghana took based on the report? I disagree with the decision. Even though the Bank of Ghana I said that. I disagree with the decisions. Mm-hmm. I disagree with the way it went about. I disagree with the way it went okay. about to take those decisions. Uh, Prof, did Unibank give out 1.6 billion to 
um, shareholders and related parties in the forms of loans and advances without due process? Where well, I don't you know. I don't. I can't recall the number of loans that they give in this in this in this. In this did you give out um, loans? Did the bank give out loans to related parties and other related companies? Well, I don't know, but presumably yes. Uh, that that can, that 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 can happen because I mean related parties or uh, 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 shareholders or whoever, you know, are also customers. The fact that they own it doesn't mean they cannot obtain in in a facility or anything from 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 the bank. But these monies that were given out were they given out according to due process? I don't know. You don't know if they were given out to I, due I process. I don't know because I don't agree. This no. So I'm asking you. So I'm asking you a, a specific question that. Was there any point where monies were forwarded to these related parties without uh, recourse to, without recognizing them as a loan, without recourse to due process? Well, I don't know. I can't. I, 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 I can't. I can't recall of that. Nothing like that came to the board, uh, so I can't. I can't. You know. Okay. Uh, did it ever come to the board that the bank paid rent for some buildings that are occupied by related companies with no refunds? Well, we don't know. Those type of nitty gritty things, you know, don't come to the board. I mean, those are those administrative issues and those stuff things. They don't come to the board. Okay. Um, the CEO approved and the bank paid $500,000 to link latest LLP Dubai. Um, he engaged a law firm on behalf of Hoda. At that time, um, did the board notice anything like this? No, it never came to the board. What was the relation, the nature of the relation between the board and management? Well, I mean, like any other other organization, you know, on a, on by a, a quarterly basis, you know, we have the board meeting and they submit the financial position of the bank uh, and, you know, the, the for the previous three months and, and activities that are taking place and, and some of the loans, you know, that we are aware of it, that we've asked them to follow up and those, those type of things, just like any uh, uh, management report to, to the board. Okay. But there are some, some of these mm. things that you are mentioning, you know, we, never, we, we didn't know what we okay. didn't know. Okay. Um, several guarantees related companies were approved by the CEO, either acting alone or with other officials. They were omitted from the bank's official list of guarantees obtained from its risk department. The CEO was also the board chair, a truly executive chairman, also gave sole approval for letters of credit with no collateral to uni precision. Twelve million dollars and Alban Logistics four million dollars. I just, I, we just, I just heard about it when this uh, issue came about. I have never known about. But it. the CEO at the time who pro- who approved of it was the board chair. No, no, no. He was not the board chair. He was the board chair of Unicredit, not uh, Unibank. He was the board chair of of Uni uh, Unicredit or whatever. Not, not, not Unibank. He was not the board chair of Unibank. He can be the board. Unicredit chair. hasn't been named here. I'm talking about Uni Precision and Unibank. Well, no, no. What I'm saying is that. The CEO of Unibank was not the chair of the board of Unibank. But I think he was the chair of Unicredit, board well, chair of Unicredit. Well, I don't know. I don't know about that. You don't know if he was chair no, of Unicredit? I don't know. Honestly, I didn't know until this issue started came up. You don't know if he was chair of Unicredit? No. But in fact, even if he was a chair of Unicredit, Unicredit is a financial institution. And the members of the board, you know, are approved by the Bank of Ghana. So why would Bank of Ghana approve somebody who is a CEO of one bank, one financial institution, one financial institution to be the chairperson of the board of another financial institution? How did this happen? How does it happen that the CEO of one financial institution become the chairperson of the board of another financial institution? Wasn't that curious to you as a board member? Isn't that an, an issue that you could have raised? At no, the but time? what I'm saying that this came to me. This came to our attention after this. You know, all as this as board about. member, it didn't concern you to find out the positions that your man, key management staff were holding, and if you could have put them maybe in a in a curious position, a position of possible conflict. But there's a rule. There's the, the rules and uh, of the law. He should not be involved himself in any situation that creates conflict of interest. So until that conflict of interest or, or the perceived conflict of interest come to the board, we'll not be able to do that. We don't have to go and undertake investigation that we're going to investigate as whether a managing director or executive director has it done or has done that. Until the issue comes to the board, we'll not be able to follow up and we will not know about that. Mm. It did not um, concern you to check on the backgrounds of any of these persons. 
um, to find out what other positions they had, considering the fact that the CEO's appointments under normal circumstances is done by the board? Well, well, well it, was, it was not necessary at that time because for, let, it was not necessary at that time because uh, for some of us, by the time we joined the bank, these people were already in the bank. Okay. For instance, this uh, the current CEO that we're talking about was a COO, you know, in the bank. All right, and then when the old uh, CEO left, you know, he was promoted to become the CEO. We sent to the Bank of Ghana, and the Bank of Ghana, you know, approved of it. So, I was hoping that at the time when the Bank of Ghana was approving him to become the CEO of the bank, that was an opportunity for them to establish or to ask him as to whether. You know, he holds any other position that can create a conflict of interest on that. But since the Bank of Ghana approved his appointment, then ipso facto, it means that, you know, everything is okay. And then also to the board. Nothing of that nature came to the board, which means to say, look, he is the CEO here, but he's the board chairman of here, and the board chairman is here, and that. Honestly, nothing like that. Unicredit is a related party to Unibank. That's right. Right. That's right. And it's never occurred to you as a board member that he was serving on a, on the board of another bank? No. Never came to the right, board. Right, right. Um, you are the head of IFS. Yes, I'm the executive You are yes. the executive director of IFS. Yes. It says here KPMG could not find board approval for a yearly donation of 500,000 Ghana cities as corporate social responsibility to mm-hmm. Institute of Fiscal Studies IFS and the provision of a land cruiser worth 233,135 Ghana cities. In the first place, IFS is a related party to Unibank. Yes. yes. You are head of IFS. Yes. You are board member of Unibank. Yes. IFS receives 500,000 cities as CSR from yes. Unibank. Yes. Is that position not... Um, is, that, is that not strange? No, let's, 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 let's step back. The land cruiser was purchased by, as, a, as a donation by Unibank to IFS in 2014. At that time, I was not a board member. Subsequently, I became a board member in 2016, two years after that. Now, the IFS, you know, approached Unibank for support because IFS is the non um, it's NGO, you know, so we, we, de- we depend on the support and the generosity of, you know, companies, including Unibank, not only Unibank. So we approved for support from Unibank. And we told them that we need a vehicle at that time. So Unibank bought the vehicle, you know, for IFS. And the vehicle was registered in the name of Unibank. All right. So now as I'm talking to you now, I have the document that shows that the car belongs to uh, IFS. You know, as a donation, which we approved that. The MD who was uh, appointed by uh, Bank of Ghana at the time of the OE, wrote a letter to me asking me about that. And I explained it to him. So, so. And then what, when he, what he wrote to me is that, can I make, produce any documents which shows that that vehicle was given to us as a donation? And I said, but why are you asking me for that document? Ask your people in there who donated, who brought, bought the car and those type of things. They should have a document covering, you know, the pictures of the vehicle and how the vehicle was registered in the name of IFS and so on. So why are you putting the onus on me to give you those questions when, in fact, the people who undertake that action are in, are in, in Unibank? So go and talk to them and about that. Same great bank Helping you grow Do you have challenges transferring money to your friends or customers with accounts at other banks? Are you worried at the delays with other banks' checks you deposit into your account? Do you have challenges paying your workers or suppliers instantly across banks? You don't need to wait for two days anymore. Walk into any ADB branch today and send your money instantly to any account in Ghana or link ADB Instant Pay to your accounting software for all salaries and payments. You can also access ADB Instant Pay service on our mobile banking app, internet banking, and star 767 hash. ADB, truly a Greek and more. What are you looking for? Now I'm got it all. Great discount, no door. Yeah, my fee has sold. Best bargains on our days. Everything here is a bargain. 
high quality Put me a priority So tell your mom Tell copy Tell your Actually everybody It's your day off and you end up looking after the baby while your wife goes off to work. You realize you have no idea how to change a diaper. So you video call your wife. Hello, darling. Yeah, hello. Hello. Kojo, is everything all right? Everything is not all right. I'm not seeing Toku. How do I change a baby's diaper, please? Kojo, Kojo. Okay, first, put the diaper. The video call freezes. <laughs> While you wait for the internet to catch up, the baby sprouts a fountain and wets the diaper. As you are getting a new one, your wife comes back online. Kojo, no! Give a big... But I have to go and get a new diaper. What must I do next? I beg, quick, 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 Open quick. the front of the diaper. It's the side that has... Wow, look, eh? the video freezes again. Abba. By now, you know where the conversation is going. There's no buffering in real life. So why accept it from your internet connection? Get connected and experience ultra-fast internet to your home powered by MTN Fiber Broadband from the Internet Masters. MTN, everywhere you go. What's your thing? A high baller always after the bigger picture. Living your life in boardrooms, transiting through VIP lounges into first or business class. Sipping on some way while flipping through pages of FT and Bloomberg. What's your thing? Your life is busy and your schedule is crazy. But when you can make some time, you try to unwind with some jazz or high life. Over some drinks with friends, but the business talk never ends, even at the bar. Live the life you love on the go with the Stanbeck Bank mobile app. Stanbeck Bank, moving forward. Blow the candles, sound the trumpets, and scream! Media is 50! Media, your number one air conditioner and appliance manufacturer is 50 years old. 50 years of top-notch quality and we're celebrating it big. Starting from 15% discount on appliances from any media showroom or authorized reseller. Join the celebration of Media at 50. We have amazing home appliances and great discounts. Tabletop fridges starting at 499 Ghana CDs. 4 banana gas cookers starting at 799 Ghana CDs. Chest freezers are also starting at 799 Ghana CDs. Blow the candles, sound the trumpet and scream! And so many appliances for you to choose from. One so much, oh dear. Remember, it's a celebration. It's media at 50 big sales on appliances. Visit a media showroom or authorized reseller now. Or call us on 0503 400 600. It's the media at 50 promotion. Terms and conditions apply. I am Dr. Keisha. Acacia gives your workers the best customer service and treatment options when the need arises, keeping them healthier and more productive for your business. Acacia Health Insurance. We place value on those you value. Yes! Atom Price 2018! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ghana! It's time for God Almighty to inhabit the praises of His people. Atone Praise 2018 brings you a dynamic assembly of the finest praise and worship leaders. Let's join heart with one accord to glorify the Lord of hosts. The gateway of heaven will open as Dinah Hamilton, Sax Bossa, Willie and Mike, Pastor Kwame Manukwe and Kweku Jesse usher us to the heavenly throne room. The dew of heaven will fall on the ministration of Elder Mreku and Eben to shatter all yokes to declare victory. The date is Friday, 31st August 2018, and the venue is Perez Dome, Jolu Junction. Join the conversation. Hashtag Adon Praise 18. Adon Praise 2018 is brought to you by Vodafone. The future is exciting, ready, and Yield Money Plus, Fast to Talk, Sponsors, DBS Roofing Sheets, Roof Papa Power Fee, Belacqua, Proudly Ghanaian, Dr. Caesar Lena Energy Drink, Ada Bridge, Away, Amanak Real Estate. You dream it, we build it. Franco Traded Enterprise, Phone Papa. 
proper perfume, Vitamilk, a meal on its own, classic no mosquito coil and spray. Wubbe de Fili, Escort Security Services. Think safety, choose Escort Security. Goldman Capital, financial support, solid as gold. Fresh Lady, Iopo Fresh. Araba Basin Pills, Maya Obasima, Papa's Pizza. Taste it, love it. Trelido, Africa's strongest burglar proofing, securing your blessings. Media Partners, Precious TV, Footprint TV, Sweet Melodies FM, Sunny FM, Deal TV, and powered by the Multimedia Group Limited. Adum 106.3 FM. Yeah, yeah, tough. Adum Praise 2018. Yeah, baby. This has given you. Baby.